us this morning for the official groundbreaking ceremony out here at Park West Fieldhouse. In just a few moments, you're going to hear from a cast of very important speakers, many leaders uh, who have helped make this facility become a reality. And then following our last speaker, we'll have a ceremonial uh, uh, groundbreaking and we'll also have a few photo opportunities. And then we invite you to all of you to join us for, re uh, for, for refreshments. To kick things off this morning, it's my honor to welcome UTSA President Dr. Taylor Amy to the podium. I'm glad I'm here. I, uh, I live somewhere over there and I tried to come by a Kyle Seal. <laughs> yeah. That didn't work. And I, because we have such a wonderful partnership with UT Health San Antonio, I decided to do a tour of the new medical office building going in, and there was no way to do a shortcut. So I was like, okay, I better call and get some help. Fortunately, there were a lot of able people who said, what are you doing? Get over here, you're late. So I'm here, and I'm happy, and I'm delighted. Um, you know, um, Red McComb said this on my very first day on the job, and I love telling this story, and we are in perfect agreement about it. Athletics is the front door, the front porch to UTSA. And uh, it's probably even more true today than it was five years ago. And uh, why do I say that? It's because in our community, Regardless of whether you're one of the 150,000 alums from Roadrunner Nation, you believe deeply in where UTSA is going and you believe deeply in the power of, of Division I athletics here at UTSA and you take great pride in where Roadrunner Nation is going on the playing field and on the court. And uh, this community has embraced our athletic enterprise in a manner that is astounding and everybody loves our Roadrunner Nation sports enterprise because it's a wonderful thing to root for and so who wouldn't want to have that as a, a front porch for the institution now there are other things that we're doing that are important um, where we're going as a university but today we're here to celebrate athletics and I had a chance to say hi to every one of the women's soccer players who are here and I'm reminded they're very kind and gentle about this, but we've been talking about doing this and having this field house here for a while. And as I said to all of them, better late than never. <laughs> and they were very forgiving about the fact that it's taken me a while to get to this point, but what the heck, we're here, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I have wonderful colleagues and uh, they're all here. Um, I, I have the best job in the world. I have many bosses. But there are some that are really instrumental about today. And the first is Gene Dawson. And as you know, the Dawson family are really my, my bosses in life, Gene and Sam. And uh, uh, Gene was prophetic last year when we opened up the Roadrunner Athletic Center of Excellence. You may recall that he had a long list of things that we had to tackle. He's probably gonna mention it again, but this long list included the first on the list, which was this facility. And there are about four other things on the list that we have to work towards. But if you think about where we're going, our ascendancy in the American Athletic Conference, did someone whistle about that? I just thought about that. <laughs> Who did that? I did. Nice. Wonderful, our provost. Yeah. Our provost, Kimberly Esping, is the biggest Roadrunner fan. All right, Kimberly, you get up here and give this talk. So, um, uh, but, but I have to say, um, the power of, of Gene and his vision and what the Roadrunner Foundation can do for us is really, really prophetic because it's a really a public-private partnership that allows us to creatively develop our our athletics facilities and as you know as a state enterprise we can't use uh, system resources or legislatively appropriated resources for athletic facilities so we have to do it creatively and 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 obviously that involves partnerships that I'm going to talk about in a second but Gene I say thank you as I always do as my boss you're the best and I 
know that we wouldn't be here today without you. So we appreciate you deeply. Lisa, you are the best AD in the world. Your vision for all of this has been uh, equivalent to Gene's perseverance. And uh, we're very fortunate to have you. And we celebrate you. And the fact that you're recognized nationally as a wonderful AD says a lot. And I know that uh, you're advancing women's sports here at UTSA is also important. And that's a big thing about today as well. Veronica, she's my other boss. I have a lot of bosses, but Veronica has this amazing ability to create things and to develop things in partnership with her, her, her partner in crime, Karina Green, because we do, um, would you two stand up for a second? All of the things that we do related to development of our facilities everywhere on all our campuses wouldn't happen without the two of you. So thank you for that. Um, you know, divisions are, are this is a, a very broad enterprise that's re reflected here today. So athletics is important. Our business affairs division is important. Our university relations and advancement is important. Our academic enterprise is important. Our alumni engagement is important. But, but today we get to celebrate some really important strategic partnerships for us. And what do I mean by that? Well, part of athletics being the front porch for UTSA and our community, in all honesty, part of our being who we are as a university in our community involves deep strategic partnerships with Bear County and the city of San Antonio. I have the best darn job in the world because the day I arrived, Judge Wolf and Mayor Nuremberg embraced everything that we wanted to do about where UTSA is going. And if you think about the future and you think about the things that we're doing downtown with expansion and you think about the things we're doing in concert with Dr. Henrich and UT Health San Antonio around the School of Public Health, if you think about the investments that our county has made in us and our city has made in us. We have the best darn partners in the world here. They believe deeply in who we are and where we're going as an institution, whether it involves football, soccer, or public health. And it's a profoundly important partnership to be in place for us. And I've embraced it every day that I've been here. And I am so fortunate to have Judge Wolf as a partner, Mayor Nuremberg as a partner, City Manager Walsh as a partner, the County Commissioners, City Council members who are here, Commissioner Barnard, Councilwoman Ocho Garcias. We are so fortunate to have our guests here with us and uh, it just speaks to the power of where we're going as an institution. And if I think about the American Athletic Conference, I think about the list that Gene has. We have more work to do. But today is a day to celebrate the fact, listen, how, how often do you get to do a groundbreaking and dig dirt? You know, for presidents to be able to dig dirt, it means something profound has happened. But today we're gonna dig dirt and we hear dirt movers moving in the background. Caterpillar, there are caterpillars out there who can't not be happy about it. So I just wanna say I have the best job in the world and we have the best partners here and where we're going as an institution, whether it's on the playing field or in the classroom or in the laboratory. We are just very fortunate to have these partners. And so with that, I just want to turn my hat finally to everybody in athletics because this has been a long day coming, but especially to our student athletes who are here. It's for all of you that we do this. And we are so proud of you and what you do. We appreciate how you compete. We appreciate how you're student athletes. We appreciate that you're gonna go out and change the world and make it a better place. So today is for you. So congratulations. <laughs> Andy, the floor is yours. All right, let's welcome uh, our guests and we'll start with uh, with Gene Dawson. And uh, you have a few words, so come on up, Gene. Thank you, Dr. Amy, always embarrasses me because, you know, as always, there's a ton of people making all this happen. It's, it's not just me, but again, to uh, emphasize the purpose of the Roadrunner Foundation is to support athletics through fundraising and construction. And I think you can see over the last several years, we've been uh, successful at that. We, the, uh, as Dr. Amy mentioned, 
we can't use UT system dollars for athletics, so it, it, uh, we think there's a lot of money out there, but none of it can be put in uh, to athletics. But what the foundation can do is we can monetize our pledges, our revenue streams, and our support of the city of San Antonio and County uh, to bring the construction forward and uh, make things happen. And uh, I think that the, uh, the foundation is pay, uh, playing a critical role in building these facilities uh, to help our student athletes be the very best they can on the field. And, uh, uh, you know, if you don't think facilities matter, we did uh, about this time last year have the ribbon cutting for the race facility. And uh, you can see the success we've had on the field uh, last year in football and the recruiting and what a difference that has made uh, for UTSA. And we hope uh, that this uh, soccer and track facility uh, will do the same uh, for uh, this sport also. And I can tell you for several years now, we've been very embarrassed that these student athletes have to practice out here and then go find a place, probably in their car, back to campus to uh, uh, change and go to class. So uh, we're very proud to say that uh, this facility will be completed by the end of April of 2023, and uh, we will we will solve that problem for these uh, student athletes. Of course, the uh, the foundation is made up of volunteers, and uh, there's not a very large group. But today we have uh, Dr. Buddy Swift with us here in foundation. He's <laughs> Dr. Swift is uh, one of the original foundation. Uh, members with James Bodenstadt back in about 2011, so he's been here the whole time. And then Cindy Jorgensen is here today. Our <laughs> other members are Martin Salinas, Brian Tramontano, uh, and Mike Setzer, uh, April Ansira, and Pat Frost. And uh, so we, we meet continually trying to move uh, athletics uh, forward. You know, as a volunteer, uh, organization, a nonprofit organization. It's critical that we team with the absolute best community partners to design and build something in San Antonio. And uh, so uh, now for uh, five years, uh, we've had the same team and uh, we're led by Project Control of Texas. They are our project managers, so thank you, Project Control. Uh, our, our architect is Marvin Mock. Uh, and everybody's familiar with Marvin Mock. They teamed with the National uh, Architect, uh, Sports Architect Populist. And then, of course, uh, everything in town is uh, either uh, built or should be built by Joris Construction. And, uh, uh, th this group, though, has uh, been together in San Antonio uh, for literally decades uh, building projects, and they're trusted. And the main thing that we have with this group is they're as committed to the the success of UTSA athletics as everyone else here today. And so it's critical uh, that everyone on the job uh, has the same commitment. Uh, while this facility will be completed uh, in the spring of next year, the foundation, as Dr. Amy says, I have a long list, and uh, we're, we're not uh, finished. Uh, if you were paying attention, you saw in the city bond election, we got $5 million uh, for the basketball and volleyball practice facility. And that is our, our next priority. We're working on that. We're trying to move that facility forward. And we also have a focus on on-campus improvements to baseball and softball. So, uh, you know, I guess once a year, I'm gonna either be at a ribbon cutting or a groundbreaking, and we're just gonna keep the pace going until we're finished. So again, thank you for supporting the funding. Let's see here. Uh, next up is uh, Dr. Lisa Kapos, uh, Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics and UTSA Athletic Director.
good morning. It is certainly a great day to be out here today. And it's, uh, to Jean's point, it's hard to believe just a little um, less than a year ago, we were all together celebrating the uh, grand opening of the Rotor Inter Athletic Center of Excellence. So I'm with Jean. This is, we can get used to doing this for a lot of our facilities. Um, before I make my remarks, I would like to invite um, Judge Wolf and Commissioner Bernard um, and our student athletes, um, Isa Hernandez, Brooke Lomax, and Her Harrison Wade up to the podium. We have our student athletes up here. I'm actually going to um, just brag on them a little bit that um, Issa um, from our women's soccer program is a five time Conference USA Honor Roll member and two time Conference USA Academic Medal recipient, has played in 58 career matches with 40 starts, earned her bachelor's degree in biochemistry, and is currently working on a postgraduate degree. Congratulations. <laughs> country and track and field team is a conference USA honor roll member a top eight finisher in the 800 meter run at conference USA indoor and outdoor championships this year and led the team with a personal best time of two minutes and 11 seconds in the 800 this season <laughs> And Harrison from our cross country and track and field team is a three-time Conference USA Honor Roll member, has top 15 finisher at the 2019 Conference USA Cross Country Championships, and is the UTSA Student Government Association Senator and SAC Executive Board SGA liaison. So congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Amy mentioned a lot of folks who have made this happen. Collectively, we continue to invest not only in our UTSA student athletes, but also in our wonderful and inspiring youth of Bear County and the city of San Antonio. This groundbreaking ceremony marks another investment in the future of UTSA athletics and contributes to the upward trajectory of our department. UTSA Athletics' winning vision is to transform lives as San Antonio's nationally recognized Division I program. Our winning purpose is to develop champions in the classroom, in competition, and in life, while serving an integral part of our undergraduate experience, enhancing the visibility of the university while engaging our community. This facility matches that winning purpose and winning vision. This facility will improve our efforts in providing a championship experience while also helping to attract and retain the finest coaches and student athletes. It will primarily serve our track and field and soccer programs, who by the way, earned the following grade point averages this past spring. Soccer, 3.56. Women's track and field, 3.35. And men's track and field, 3.2. This facility will also support um, and very um, in the right timing as we celebrate um, Title IX's 50th anniversary. This facility will support our Title IX efforts by providing our women's soccer and track and field programs with the type of amenities that Park West will offer and providing again, a championship experience. And I do wanna um, thank our student athletes who you have not stopped believing in us. And as Dr. Amy had pointed out, 
this has been a project that's been talked about since probably you were recruited and before that. And you continue to believe in all of the folks here today that we will always have your best interest and always strive to be able to provide these types of amenities to you. Every day, these student athletes work tirelessly to represent our department. I would also like, I know we have other um, coaches and student athletes and, and staff in the audience, if you could please stand and be recognized. Again, the, the entire staff works tirelessly and they want to represent you all in this room. They also recognize and appreciate the commitment by our community to our athletic and academic pursuits. The community is the driving force to the continued elevation of UTSA athletics and will serve as motivation to our coaches, staff, and student athletes. I would also be remiss if I didn't also share my excitement about how this facility will grow, or excuse me, will allow greater partnership with our community, particularly as it relates to our youth. As a first generation Latina college graduate, I appreciate the value of higher education, and I strongly believe that exposure to a college campus can have an enormous impact on our youth. UTSA Athletics, in partnership with other UTSA departments, is committed to providing opportunities for our youth to experience a sense of belonging and to feel a welcoming environment at this facility. And I want to say thank you to the leaders here today for recognizing the value of our future leaders in our youth. Again, I know a lot of thank yous have been given, but I, I would be remiss to, to leave this podium without also recognizing them. Again, a huge thank you to Jean. You always find a way. You're truly a force, an inspiration, and a friend. To our generous donors, particularly Kelly and Brian Tramitano, who I know are able to be with us today. Kelly was a former soccer player at the University of Arkansas, so this means a lot to her. To the Myers Stafford Prior Charitable Trust, to Karen and Don Wagner, and to Antoinette and Jeff McTrick, excuse me, Mick Kittrick for your contributions to this facility. And Dr. Amy um, recognized many today, but I also just want to say thank you to our UTSA administration. Obviously, particularly to Dr. Amy, to Veronica, um, you continue to be immensely supportive of athletics. I know we present challenges, we are always asking, um, but again, you always find a way and we appreciate um, you so much. And of course, a special thank you to the county, to the judge, uh, to the county commissioners, to the to city, that you continue to believe in us and to believe in the vision of what we can do together. So thank you so much and birds up. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Campos. We also have a couple of other speakers uh, to get to. And next up is uh, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. Well, I believe you learn more on the playing fields about life than you do in the academic room. I played sports all my life. In fact, I was still playing hardball baseball until I was 69. It's a game where you learn to work with each other, where you learn to collaborate, and where you make friends for the rest of your life. In fact, I was in Houston over the weekend with two of the guys that I played football with in high school 63 years ago, a long lifetime. So these young ladies behind us uh, will make these friendships, will learn how to work together, and most important of all, they'll learn how to compete. Life is competitive, and you learn more on the field of play than you will anywhere else about how to compete, how to do it in a fair manner, how to properly act, how to be ethical, all those things you learn playing sports. So 
I think they're absolutely critical to the development of young young people, young people today. We went to the voters in 2008, the county did, and they funded $85 million for 13 different regional parks. And right across from us is the soccer field and the track field, which was about $15 million, I think. And then with Maria Lynn Bernard, when she came on to the commissioner's court, uh, she pushed hard that we provide funding for the field house that we have today, I think some $8 million. Gene Dawson, uh, he's something else. Uh, <laughs> he will work very hard on a particular project to get it funded, and then he'll wait about a week, <laughs> and then he'll start working on you for another funding for another facility. <laughs> so we hope to be supported. We'd like to see baseball stadium that would be shared with the AA missions. Um, we'd like to see you get your basketball facilities going up and going. I think the evolution of women's sports has been absolutely critical to the development of our nation. I must say, by and large, we're better off with women who are elected to office than men that are elected to office. <laughs> and I really believe that on the uh, sports field, you learn those attributes about how to enter politics and how to compete and how to get things done. So I just can't emphasize enough. Taylor Amy, uh, you know, he hit here and he worked hard on some plans and I would listen to him every day and I was wondering, wow, I hope some of this comes true. And by gosh, it has come true. What he's doing in the downtown area, this transformation, uh, the new uh, digital uh, uh, school that's being built there, cybersecurity, et cetera, is getting close to getting completed. Um, and it'll be right on the San Pedro Creek that the county, the county is doing absolutely stunning building. And uh, I must say, when you come off of uh, I-35 and you drive to town, not best to be TSA <laughs> sign on that building. So it's really transforming what they're doing in sports and uh, what they're doing academically and what they're doing for the inner city. So I can't thank you enough for your leadership and everything you guys are doing. Lisa has been a real inspiration to all of us and we listen to her very carefully when she talks about what's needed for sports. So thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Wolf. We have one more honored speaker from uh, Bear County today, Precinct 3 County Commissioner uh, Mar Maria Lynn Barnard and UTSA Park West Campus and our main campus are both located within Precinct 3. Thank you very much. This is such an exciting day. Uh, thank you for having me here and it was a pleasure to be a part of this. It was actually a dream come true. Having played sports as a female before Title IX, this has been a long time coming. So I'm very thankful to UTSA for the compliance on that and to the soccer women. You are awesome. Keep up that and keep up your leadership once you leave school too. Thank you. Uh, quickly, I know you've been in the sun a long time. UTSA is a prosperity engine generator. Uh, for our entire region. Bear County, yes, but the entire area of South Texas, which is exciting to me. Um, supporting higher education, helping to secure a bright future for generations to come for Bear County residents, as well as all of South Central Texas and all of Texas. And we'll take New Mexico, Arizona, right with Louisiana, anywhere. Um, we believe in investing in UTSA. And by the way, I went here actually one semester when I think it was just one building that was out here. I had two little preschoolers at the time. Uh, but UTSA means investing in students and ultimately investing in our community. And when we talk about economic development, education is critical to that. So thank you very much. There are tremendous economic uh, opportunities for Park West Fieldhouse which will bring attract, it will actually attract thousands and thousands of people. And uh, over the next dec couple of decades, I can, or longer if the Lord allows, I can hardly wait to see it. <laughs> uh, but many, um, more importantly, this new facility will provide public access 
to residents of Precinct 3, that's the precinct I represent, as well as all the precincts. Not just for youth sports and competitive sports, but certainly all, all types of uh, competitive sport or non-competitive sports, if there's such a thing. It is uh, our utmost um, joy to be in partner with UTSA, the City of San Antonio, and to continue to serve the community and deliver more accessible amenities to everyone to enjoy. So thank you very much, and I greatly appreciate the honor.